Terrible moments caused by the coronavirus pandemic. Historians may actually remember the milestone the U.S. passed today as one of the worst of them all. I'm Doug Dunbar. As of today, COVID-19 has claimed the lives of more than 676,000 Americans. The 1918 Spanish flu, the worst pandemic of the 20th century, killed an estimated 675,000 Americans. And in the year and a half since the pandemic began, doctors have learned a lot about treatments. Some work, we know some don't, and still others they're trying to figure out. Tonight, our Brooke Katz goes beyond the headlines and the online misinformation with an in-depth look at them all. I've been involved in vaccine trials. I'm actually a subject in a vaccine trial myself. Dr. Robert Gottlieb with Baylor Scott and White Research Institute has been on the cutting edge of all things COVID. We've also studied different small molecule antivirals. We've gone through a slew of anti-inflammatory uh, medications. A principal investigator in several trials, he's seen the treatments come and go. There are many therapies that work on paper or even in the laboratory that don't work when you bring it to a human. We have to remember, we're not trying to treat a virus in a test tube, we're trying to treat a virus in a human being. We've clearly studied hydroxychloroquine. We've shown that that promise is a false promise. It's one of the best studied things in the world, and it just doesn't help for the virus. Anti-malarial drug hydroxychloroquine is used to treat conditions like arthritis and lupus. Early studies showed promise in a laboratory setting, and doctors thought it could help keep people's immune systems from overreacting. But Dr. Gottlieb says peer-reviewed studies found it does not benefit patients hospitalized with COVID-19. We can draw a very complex pathway of why it should work, but we can't will it into existence as an effective therapy. The data is the data. A second treatment showing promise, at least for severe cases of COVID, an antiviral called remdesivir. Remdesivir, not only does it decrease the duration of hospitalization, regardless of oxygen support level required in the hospital, actually saves lives. It received full FDA approval last October for use in adults and pediatric COVID patients 12 and older requiring hospitalization. It's still being studied for outpatient use. Another potential treatment getting attention right now, ivermectin. It is FDA approved to treat certain parasitic worms, head lice, and skin conditions like rosacea. It has also shown some antiviral properties, but the jury is still out as a treatment for COVID. Clinical trials are underway, and Dr. Gottlieb says it's just too early to know if it's helpful. We haven't completely disproven it, but we have no evidence at the moment of efficacy. So this is what you would take and do a randomized clinical controlled trial. In fact, the NIH is doing that through one of their trials called Active 6. Right now, we don't know that answer. There's no recommendation for it. I personally do not prescribe it. Human grade ivermectin requires a prescription, but it is also a drug for animals. Because of its popularity on blogs and social media, there were reports of people raiding feed stores buying the animal grade drug. That, Dr. Gottlieb says, is dangerous and could keep you from getting a treatment that is proven to work. If someone thinks that they're being protected by ivermectin and they're not, you're really just prescribing them a version of a placebo and losing the opportunity to actually get treated with an effective therapy. And so from that standpoint, it really is harmful because it gives the illusion of protection when you don't. The most promising treatment at the moment in an outpatient setting, monoclonal antibodies. If you have one or more mild symptoms, we showed that we could prevent 70 to 87 percent of those patients from being hospitalized and we could actually save lives if used early. Those are the monoclonal antibodies. There's three different manufacturers for that. Uh, there's no comparative efficacy data. It's the one that's on the shelf in your healthcare system that's the appropriate one. Various centers have opened up all across Texas to provide the therapy free of charge. Dr. Gottlieb says outside of clinical trials, it's important to stick to what we know will work. Even as I conducted the research, I was really convinced that therapy X or therapy Y would really work. And when we've actually wrapped up the study and actually determined who's who, I've been very humbled by that answer. Saving lives while scientists work to find the next big treatment. And another treatment Dr. Gottlieb says is really proven helpful. It involves cheap, readily available medication. 
Corticosteroids, but only for hospitalized patients needing oxygen, they can actually be harmful to those who are not in that situation. So it really kind of uh, illustrates that balancing act, Doug. So along the way, we've talked a lot about hospitalized patients. Obviously, that's the most concern. But what about kind of the mild cases and healthy people for the most part? Any treatment items or options for them? Yeah, right now, Doug, there really is not. Prevention, Dr. Gottlieb says, is your best defense. He does recommend getting vaccinated. He says there's nothing wrong with some of those more home remedies, vitamins D, vitamin, uh, vitamin D, vitamin C, and a multivitamin. While they may not have an effect on the virus, he says they can make you feel more positive. And that mentality alone when you are sick is powerful, Doug. Boy, we think about the last year mentality. Positiveness is a big factor. Brooke, thank you.